This is a 101 on GraphQL. What GraphQL is, is a query language that the consumers of your API can use to read the data that your API fronts and change the data that your API fronts. First, let me mention that GraphQL is language agnostic, right? Framework agnostic. GraphQL is a specification for how clients should be able to interact with your API, and that can be implemented in whichever language. For the purposes of this tutorial, I am going to choose JavaScript, right? Underneath the JavaScript options, different teams implemented the GraphQL API server in different ways. Just because of my preference, I'm going to go with this one. First, you need to install these dependencies, which I already have done, right? And then you need to paste in this snippet of code, right? Which I already have done. And I already have it run. This snippet of code, right? Gives you the capability to query for this piece of data, the hello piece of data, right? Now, just like with REST APIs, how the REST APIs have to follow a certain pattern, right? It's usually based on the route, right? Et cetera, right? You have to implement the logic of each endpoint on your REST API or your custom API for that matter. It's the same thing with GraphQL. GraphQL will give you all the API endpoints, but you need to implement the logic that gets triggered by each of the endpoints, right? That's that. I mean, you can get the gist of it, right? When you issue this query to the API, it's going to trigger this logic, right? Which returns this string, right? Let's just play around with it so you see. It's just the same as any other API, right? Any custom API, any REST API, right? So I changed it, right? And now we get the updated data. So now instead of this simple schema, we are going to use this schema. So you can use whichever database you want, right? GraphQL is agnostic to the implementation logic of each API endpoint. I am using MongoDB, but you can use MySQL, Postgres, etc. We have a MongoDB server running and GraphQL has this cool tool in the ecosystem called GraphQL Compose. Pretty much what it allows you to do is use the schema language, right? The syntax for building your schema in your database. Using GraphQL Compose, you can translate this information into all of the endpoints and all of the implementation logic of all the endpoints that allows you to do for the most part, every possible combination of what you could do when reading or writing data to your API. So here, right, are all of the possible CRUD operations, create, read, update, delete, right? This is going to allow you to do everything with your data. These are like the foundational operations that you can do against your data. Using GraphQL Compose, it'll automatically generate all the implementation logic in order for it to interface with your database correctly. And it'll automatically generate the API endpoints that you can call from your clients, right? And then here, I import the schema and then I mount it. Now I'm going to restart the server. Now let's test this out. This is going to look strange to you, right? But this is GraphQL syntax, right? It's probably what throws people off, right? But this is how you query for the data in your database, right? Another cool thing about GraphQL is that you can very specifically pick out, right, exactly what data you want and send that back to the client, right? So this allows you to save bandwidth, right? It saves your customer bandwidth, saves the money, 
So that's GraphQL.